everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Small Business Storytellers. Today, we have Chris Healy, El Rubio, on the show, uh, CEO and founder of The Long Hairs. Chris, how are you doing today? Doing fabulous. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, I'm stoked for this conversation because um, many times we see like little products, like little everyday products, and we just wonder like, oh, that's just like a widget or just a product that somebody's just going to try and sell tons and tons of. And we fail to realize like there's there's often a business, a purpose, a vision, a reason behind that little product. And that's what I love about what you guys are doing at the long hairs is there's so much more to your business than just the actual specific product that you started with. So I think that's why I'm looking forward to just hearing more about that story and that vision. So take us back to the beginning. When did the long hairs start? And, uh, and for those that don't know, what is it? Yeah, great. Thanks for uh, teeing it up there in the nice intro. Uh, so the long hairs, we are a, an e-commerce and lifestyle brand and we like to say global community for guys growing their hair, uh, guys growing long hair in particular, but many who are, you know, trying to power through the awkward stage or growing out for the first time or not sure what to do, never done it before. Uh, so we really are more of a community, but our flagship product is hair ties for guys in the world. Uh, and then we also have expanded into shampoo and conditioner and hair serum, several different headbands and head wraps and apparel and hats and all sorts of things. And that was kind of the, the because the first idea that we had was hair ties for guys. And it wasn't after until mulling it over for a little while that we ultimately decided that, OK, there's a bigger to this than just hair ties. And I think if we would have just approached it as hair ties, we wouldn't have had the success that we've had so far. Right. Uh, at any rate, to give you an idea of how we kind of came to this idea of hair ties for guys, uh, Lindsay and I were, Lindsay is, Lindsay Barto El Moreno is the co-founder and my business partner and the president of the Long Hairs. He and I were fraternity brothers in college. I work together in the fraternity as officers on committees and all sorts of things and just were great friends uh, for several years in college, kind of went our own directions and went off into our various career paths. Uh, I ended up going after my, my first job out of college, I did for about seven years. And then I left my job and I traveled around the world for 11 months. And my job prior was, you know, a corporate type style of job and in 30 years, my whole and tight, all business, buttoned up, short hair guy. And then I did this trip around the world for 11 months. I went to 28 countries. I was a total backpacker lifestyle, just a backpack. Uh, but I just let my hair grow the whole time. And I was getting close to the end of this 11-month journey around the world. And I had decided that I just wasn't going to go back into a normal type of job. I uh, wasn't sure where I was going to land, but sure enough, Lindsay called me and said, hey, I'm living in San Diego. I'm starting up a small business. It's a it's a web shop, a little marketing agency. Why don't you move to San Diego and you can help us with the business and just kind of see how things go from there. So sure enough, I landed in San Diego. Uh, El Moreno had been growing his hair out too, kind of coincidentally, but I immediately got involved in that business and took us a while to figure out what we were doing. But we were a web shop, small web shop and marketing agency. We were building websites for clients and then doing their email and their social media and really all their digital marketing world. It was really tough at first, like figuring it out. Neither of us had worked for an agency. Like, what the heck are we doing and how are we doing it? Uh, but we learned a lot. We enrolled and we aggressed enrolled in courses and boot camps and learning opportunities and went to uh, conferences and meetups and mixers. And we really became a professional agency and we were delivering really high quality work and making good money. But it was always kind of a means to an end. We always knew that we wanted to do something that was more hours. I mean, the agency is hours, but you're still working for clients, which is great but we'd been learning about digital marketing and content marketing specifically, and we were searching for our idea. 
and we tried a few different ideas. One we had called Swagnetic, and it was going to be like part swagger and part magnetism and behaviors right. and kind of personal development where started working on it. We're like, man, we're going up against like Tony Robbins and uh, a lot of the big dogs here. And this is a pretty no, no sad, this is going to be a tough uh, hill to climb. So we kept searching. And one day we were driving back from a client meeting and we're on the freeway in the car and we're just look at each other and like, dude, it's hair ties for guys. That's it. <laughs> gonna do it we're gonna make a million bucks and this whole thing and we immediately started working on the project we we filmed and edited a commercial that became our first hair ties commercial and we're getting ready to launch it and we're like wait a second we don't have any hair ties or a website or even a business or anything all we have is a, a commercial and a funny idea so we kind of had to take a few steps back and that's when we realized that we had been noticing guys with long hair as we were growing our hair for the first time and do I tie my hair up how do I tie I gotta go into the store and I'm in the women's hair care aisle and trying to figure out what to get and then what to do with it and you even we would see guys and you kind of give them the head nod like hey I know that guy went through the awkward stage and probably gets tangled hair and he probably is not an accountant and probably you know we have a lot in common and that led us to the long hairs. It's like, wait, this is a brand. It's, it's more about a community for guys with long hair, the long hair lifestyle and all of those things that we have. And so we started, we really, the, the key turning point, we were still running our agency, but we made a promise to each other. We were sure that we had our idea after flushing out a little bit more our plan. And we made a promise to each other that we were going to publish a blog post every single week just no matter what. And we had been learning how to do it. We'd been doing blogs and things. We said, okay, this is it. This is our idea. We're going to pursue it. And we have today published a blog post for four, two consecutive weeks. And God willing, we will publish number 403 this week and hit it once again. Seven years? It has been almost seven years, I think December. And I don't know, a few times we did more than one post a week ambitiously, yeah. but uh, December 12th will be seven years since we wow. launched the brand officially. It took us another year. We finally had any hair ties. We started selling them. We were selling one pack a day pretty much to begin with, but then it's really, you know, took it took took a long course since then. But that's kind of how it all got formulated and really that commitment to publishing content uh i credit with the you know what we've been able to build so far yeah so from the beginning was the plan kind of like okay you know we'll publish some blog posts and you know when guys are looking for this stuff online they'll find it through seo and then come to our website and buy them yeah and we didn't have that high of hopes for seo to begin with uh, you know, because you publish a couple of blog posts and you know, no one's really reading. We start building our email list. We knew we had to build an email list, uh, keep publishing content, and the SEO benefit will come eventually. Uh, we did, and organic social media. We weren't trying to do really much in the way of paid advertising in the beginning, but just kind of those main, like you got your website, you're building your email list, you're publishing organic social media. Uh, YouTube was also really big for us. Uh, we grew a lot through YouTube and found a lot a, a lot of our followers and audience found us through. Uh, but yeah, just putting this stuff out there and they will come. Yeah. So tell me, when was the first time that somebody bought a hair uh, a hair tie? Do you just call them hair ties? Hair ties for guys. Okay. But yeah, just yeah, hair so ties. When was the first time that somebody bought one of your hair ties that you didn't know? like a stranger, like you like open your email and there's a purchase that comes through and you're like, I don't know who this person is or where they came from, but they bought it. It would have been immediately when we launched the hair tie. And we yeah. had a little party, but you know, we'd been publishing content for over a year. So we probably had, I don't know, 500 or a thousand people on our email list who are opening reading our blog posts. So you so were doing that just to build, like you weren't even trying to sell them anything for that first year. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, cool. Just email subscriptions was our currency. So they it were still like ready. They were ready for you when you have finally had the product. 
I go, okay, someday we're going to have hair ties. Just keep hanging in there. And then we finally launched them. It was December 2015. And we got them online for purchase in probably like January of 2016. And then immediately we were making sales every single day. Amazing. So 12 bucks a day. We're like, man, it's going to take a while to get a million dollars here. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's an, that's kind of what I was going to like, what I was heading towards was, you know, it's interesting to have higher ticket items versus lower ticket items because like higher ticket, you know, if you're selling something, you're getting a couple thousand dollars per, like, you know, you're looking at, you know, several hundred, uh, you know, maybe a thousand customers to like get to that million dollar mark you got to sling a lot of hair ties for guys to like really get to the place where you're employing six people, you're getting paid what you should be, all of that stuff. So like, was that ever, how did, how did that make you feel? Like knowing like we got to sell, like we can't just sell a couple hundred of these. Like we got to sell like tens of thousands of these. It was in our mind and trust me, we did the math, like 12 bucks a pack. How many packs of hair ties do we have to sell? And those over a hundred thousand, we're doing like one a day. Uh, though because from the very beginning we knew we're playing the long game here this isn't going to happen overnight it's like growing your hair out you can't grow your hair out in t- six months or a year mm-hmm. it takes probably definitely yeah. get your hair to your shoulders uh, so we were never we were just pumped we were making sales and we kept our agency running for probably four more years uh before we went really full time with the long hairs okay. So, you know, we knew it was a huge mountain. It was like a joke almost at the time. Uh, but we knew we were in it for the long game. And that eventually if we just kept we're doing, we were going to, you know, reach where we are today and, and, and far beyond that. So as you got into this, as the company started to grow, you started to see it gain more traction. You inevitably realize, like, this is bigger than just air ties. Uh, like there's, there's more of a purpose to the company. Help me understand that journey of you becoming really a brand for like, I I don't just want to put it into like men's health, but really like a healthy brand for men. Uh, Help me understand that journey. Uh, Absolutely. And we always, you know, we were both in our fraternity together and the fraternity played a really important role in our lives. So we always kind of set out to make it a fraternal organization and Fraternities at their core, you know, well, you know, they don't all, you know, follow their core. It is to make people better people and to have a brother, a brotherhood and subscribe to common values and ideals. So we always kind of treated it like that from the beginning. And we always knew that guys who had grown their hair long have some different thing. You know, you're just, you, you've gone through things. We have some things that are very unique that makes us a community. Uh the first couple of times we got an email from guys telling us, yeah, I've been growing my hair out for years and I cut it and then I donate it and then I grow it back out. And I've been doing this for years. And we had a number of people write us write us in. Many of them had had uh, perhaps someone in their family pass away or afflicted or something. And that is what got us thinking about starting a partnership with an organization. Uh, we had one that didn't work out all that well at first, but soon after that, we partnered with Children With Hair Loss. They're a charitable organization that provide real, really quality, customized hair to children and young adults who have medically related hair loss. Uh, Could be cancer treatment, but many of the children have alopecia or burn victims or any medical diagnosis. Ship has been one of the greatest parts of our entire business. Uh, we donate $1 or excuse me, it started with $1. We, we donate 1% of our revenue to children with hair loss. Uh, to today it's been, you know, a significant amount, but, uh, that's just a, a small slice of it. I mean, yeah. we really are family with children with hair loss. We go to their annual charity ball. We participate. We do lots of things together. As you know about, we talked about it earlier, is we did a charity haircutting event in 2019 called The Great Cut. And it's kind of skipping ahead here, but we just got this crazy idea that we were going to break the Guinness World Record for the biggest hair donation in history. We put it out there in the universe and we started talking about it. And then it got to be like, okay, we have to decide a year. And now we have to decide a month and pick a date. And we're a year out and like, okay, 
doing this thing. And as it got closer, the six month point, the three month point, uh, it became like the most ambitious thing that we've ever attempted. And we put in an extraordinary, extraordinary uh, effort and energy. Uh, we, we had the event. There was about 1,300 people came. We had 100 volunteers, another 100 professional hair cutters. And we broke the Guinness World Record for the most hair donated to charity in 20 with 339 pounds of hair uh, that was donated from almost 3,000 3, individuals, wow. many who cut their hair at the event, nailed it in. Uh, and that just kind of was the next level of everything. And I was just talking about our partnership with children with hair loss, but all the proceeds went to them. And today they are, they haven't been able to have their charity ball, but we joined a digital charity ball just last weekend where the, the kids joined in on the zoom screen we got to say hi to them and how are they doing? Uh, it's just, it brings joy to the heart. And, and we're in a unique position cause we're, we're a pretty masculine brand and we're kind of like tough guys and all that kind of stuff. But when we treat those children with a high level of importance and we just show care and we're modeling the way, if you will, uh, and then we establish that at, for all of our audience and our followers and we publish it and we, we, we say and we show that it's important to do whatever you can and we're uniquely positioned to donate hair because we're the hair guys and the whole thing and it just makes sense but it's been yeah. a beautiful beautiful part of the whole story what does 400 pounds of hair look like it'll fill this whole room i don't know how big that room is. it'll fill the whole room uh, boxes and boxes and boxes of hair and we have to measure it with a special scale and the guinness world records lady is there with her clipboard and marking the last thing a couple of months before the event, we found out that we can only accept hair for the record from people who are 18 and above. And it's a rule that Guinness World Records had just through a massive curve. We have to now reach back out to everyone who mailed us their hair and ask for a photo ID. And people <laughs> are getting pissed. And I mean, it was just, uh, I, to this day, I've never put more... Uh, heart or effort. I mean, we had to almost put our business on hold for like the last three months, but That's we pulled up. whatever yeah. happens. Like, no one could ever take that away. That's amazing. And yeah, I mean, so many kids uh, that now have uh, just like the confidence i feel like just it, yes i think that's something i think of when i think of your brand with the kids that you guys are helping but also with men and like speaking as a man i think confidence is so huge and so even underrated for men like of course there's like yes. the egotistical like dick who's you know your guy that just nobody likes and he's way too confident in himself but false confidence like, yeah, false confidence. Like they're covering up for something. But I think that the like confidence is a very real aspect of what helps us to be what I think we were like created to be. Whether you're a kid and like having like, you know, a real hair wig that looks good is part of that, or whether you're you're a dude and you're growing your hair out. So talk to me about like what have you learned about confidence and why is this like such a critical piece? of your brand and your message and like what you as a company are bringing to the world? That's such a great question, Seth. No one has ever asked that. Uh, so our vision is to inspire confidence, develop masculinity and foster community among guys growing their hair. And it's that's that kind of what we just talked about, confidence, masculinity and community. Confidence plays such a key role because if you don't believe in yourself, then no one else is going to believe in you. And it's going to be pretty damn hard to get anything done if you don't believe that you can do it. And our worlds are just beset with uh, things that can chip away at our confidence constantly. To this day, on my bathroom in the mirror, it says, allow your confidence to carry you today. And it is hard to be a person today, man or woman, whatever you, wherever you are, whatever. It's hard to live. You got to pay. You got to drive. You got to have a driver's license. And if you get in trouble, then you don't have one. You got to register. And like, there's a million, million things you got to do just to survive. And those things can really chip away at your confidence if you're not having success. And particularly for young men, 
just as much for young women, but we are men, so we are a little bit better positioned to speak to men. Uh, we want to inspire confidence within them to help them believe that they can whatever it is that they set out to achieve. And that is what has driven our everything that we have become is yeah. having that confidence. And it, it's hard to keep it. And if we and it's hard to develop in the first place, and so we want to help young men and older men, you know, and and the people. It extends out to the us. We extend confidence to them as well, and just everybody has a better shot at life and happiness uh, with their confidence intact. So, how does like how does a hair tie? How do hair ties for guys help people be more confident? Great, another great question. Well, I mentioned earlier, and you could say that, okay, well, come on, you know, be a little tougher if you can't go to the women's hair care aisle and select a pack of hair ties. It's like, are you, you have fragile masculinity if you can't do that? It's like, no, it's kind of funny. You know, you're sitting there and uh, if you're, you know, an unengaged man, maybe you'll meet a nice lady in the women's hair care aisle. But the fact remains, they are all made for women. And that doesn't mean they're all like color, whatever, you know, guys like masculine shit with like trucks and, you know, fishing rods and, you know, women like those things too. And it's fine, but there was never anything for guys. And we set out to make things that were cool that a guy would actually really appreciate having. And it looks cool. And by accident, we happened to actually develop the best hair ties in the world. And you don't have to, take my word for it. There are plenty of thousands of people attest to it. And so just a small thing like a hair tie, but maybe it matches your apparel for the day, or maybe it is a business environment and your hair tie complements a nice tie up, or you're a surfer and you got some surfing, whatever it is, it's, it, it's more fun. It gives you a little bit more pride in your hair tie walking out of the door and it works better and it doesn't pull your hair out. So I would say I'm, I'm, I'm more confident when I have a, a about on my wrist. Yeah. I think that's amazing. And so I think over the last few years, like gender conversations, particularly around masculinity or femininity or any of those things, like those are hard to touch. And in the business space, I feel like most businesses want to take like a neutral approach. They just don't want to touch it. They want to make everybody happy. Like the fact that you're wanting to promote masculinity to most people is probably fine. And it's probably awesome. But to some people, they probably don't like that. So like, talk to me about the controversy or any challenges you've ran into by like really focusing on building a brand around what you look at as like masculinity. Man, fantastic question, Seth. I haven't had a chance to really dive into this in an interview that I can remember offhand. And it really is. It could be a touchy topic. And just a side note, a lot of brands have become edgy and kind of doing it. We've been doing this for seven years, okay? Everyone thinks it's funny to be edgy and cute now yeah. and everything. Okay, we've been doing having but this. Yeah, I mean, seven years, like that was... I'm thinking like that was probably around or before Dollar Shave Clubs, like famous video it was right afterwards and we definitely emulated some of the best qualities of that video in yeah. our first commercial it was right after yeah. dollar shave club so we were absolutely looking at yeah. and what they were doing and uh modeled some of the key things that they had success with yeah uh to the tougher conversation though the second part of our mission is to develop masculinity and the problem with that is over these past couple of decades in particular, you could say more so in the last decade, uh, movement, a lot of these things have been coming to light, bad behavior and bad treatment of people. I mean, every famous people and entertainment and all these things. And what is coming to light that people are angry with is bad masculinity. It is, it is bad behavior. It is, it's doing the wrong things. And that has just been looped in as masculinity. True masculinity supports femininity in its absolute. True masculinity recognizes the critical importance of both sexes 
and also res- respects the uh, the different gender everything else uh, and, and everything else under the sun, but recognizes the important uh, of every person, whoever they are, and respects. Uh, and when it comes to men and women, you know, not to belabor like gender roles, but men are providers and the family unit. And I mean, there, it's, it's not to say that it has to be a gender role like that, but baked in, like from, uh, from back our ancestors, there are certain roles that men play. And I'm not saying it has to be like that, but what we do have to do is do the right thing and have respect for others and be good men. And so when we say develop, trying to coach, men in our audience of what it means to be a good man. Yeah. How do you and separate that from the bad behaviors, you know, yeah. and, and identify the bad behaviors. And as men, we can call out those bad behaviors and set the example that we should be calling out the bad behaviors and that model. And so it's not just about saying the right things, but it's doing the right things and co- encouraging others to do the right things and, and, and setting the right example. Yeah. What we try to do every day. And when you, when you talk about promoting masculinity, like by nature, that means you have to kind of define it. Um, and I'm sure that looks a little bit different for everybody, but what are some characteristics that you guys find yourself promoting when you're, you know, promoting masculinity? That's a freaking great question. Uh, you know, I don't want to get, it's, it, I don't want to get too much into, like I mentioned gender roles, mm-hmm. uh, but, but certainly treating women with respect. Uh, we did a post some years ago on international women's day where we did in fact call out, you know, some kind of bad behaviors that uh, we can see in our society. And hey, these are not the, the type of things uh, of of true masculinity. And then pointing out some of the positive things. Um, you know, I keep saying going, uh, treating pe- people with respect, uh, maybe with it from a broader standpoint, living by the golden rule, you know, treating others as you wish to be treated, putting yourself in other people's shoes and considering what we have all been through and the traumas that we've all experienced and the difficulties we've all had and trying to appreciate other people's points and then being considerate of those points of views. And uh, another great is just being considerate of differences in people, differences in culture. Um, Like we talked about the whole uh, uh, gender that has really come out, non-binary, Q, like we openly support all those, all those differences in people. Uh, We try to, do cross-cultural lines. Uh, We try to have all types of guys with long hair uh, in our photo shoots, in our videos. Uh, So I think that's a pretty good number of examples. And that is one of our values is do the right things. And so that could be up for interpretation of what are the right things. But uh, if you had to simplify, I would just say uh, living by the golden rule. Yeah, I love it because I'm hearing that you know, a huge piece of being a man, I would even say just being a human is prioritizing respect and respecting others. And I think, especially over the last, you know, I'll say several decades, because that's how long I've been alive. Uh, And that's the experience I can speak to. You know, it seems like in a lot of scenarios, being a man is more presented of, you know, being strong. And, you know, oftentimes, like men are willing, the ones who are willing to like, walk over people to get what they want and like kind of this like bullheadedness. And so like, that's the example that's set for a lot of people. And I love that you guys are setting an example of like respect, like no matter who you are and what you believe, like, you know, we're speaking to men, like we're not saying women shouldn't be prioritizing respect. We're saying like our audience is men. And I love that you've kind of put a flag in the ground and said like, this is who we're going to build our company around. Cause I think a lot of people are afraid to not try and serve everybody. Um, what have been some things that just helped you to like 
you and your team to like stay focused, stay grounded, not even just about like speaking to men, but just in business, like it's hard to stay focused. There's always going to be like shiny object syndrome and new opportunities that might be a good opportunity and might be a distraction. Like what's helped you to just stay focused in your journey? Thanks. And just a couple off the last thing humility yeah. is another thing like coaching confidence but also humility and having a very healthy balance yeah. of those and when i was talking about not wanting to get into gender roles but i do want to talk about men who have a family and i just didn't want to say that you should have a wife and family as a man but for those who do being a good family man you know being a good partner to your spouse being an excellent father to your children spending time with them being able to communicate encouraging all of those pieces so uh, as you were responding i was just yeah. uh, you know, other points of the type of things that the qualities that make a good man if you know man wants to get married and have children and have a family whatever totally yeah, no, that's great. So yeah, what are what are some things that have just helped you stay focused along the journey as a business owner? Yeah, we've all we've just always believed uh, in the idea. Like we knew that we could learn the skills and and get better at doing making a blog and an e commerce platform and make our products better and all these things, but we just knew that we stumbled upon something, the long hairs of this idea and how meaningful and it's hard to, we have read hundred, I mean, thousands of comments and people have poured their hearts out to us and in appreciation or man, you really helped this. And I was going to cut my hair or this changed my life. I have more confidence myself to moms of little boys who are getting bullied or getting picked on. And so just the feedback that we have gotten with this community uh, has been more than enough to just to know. And, and and with all of those affirmations, it, we just know, like we're playing the long game. There's mm -hmm. never any reason for us to lose our focus or divert the path. And that's not to say on a week to week, you know, it's hard to right. always focus every day and what have you. But as far as the long term vision, there's just there, there's one path for us. Yeah, I love it. Tell me more, you know, kind of as we bring this conversation to a close, tell me more about where you see the long hairs going uh, you know, handful of years down the road, what's the long-term vision that you have for this company? Yeah. So we're still building considerably staffing up, uh, mentioned with six full-time team members, probably have another eight or nine contractors that are close to full-time, uh, we're moving to a new warehouse, kind of scaling up our operations, and then we're working on about a dozen new products, many that are shampoo and conditioner, hair care products, but also brushes and a handful of others. So there are a lot of those things in kind of the shorter term that we're really elevating uh, our business into kind of the next category. Uh, but your question is a little bit more long-term focused. And what I see Long hair is continuing to be more and more like uh, an organization, a membership organization, like a fraternity. Yeah. Uh, and the more, because it means so much to our, our our audience to be part of this community and commenting, or if we you know say hi to them or chat to them or engage with them or or whatever the case. So being able to offer more of that membership experience, and again, it comes kind of from our fraternity background. But having like a membership number, having an initial mm -hmm. so badge or a membership certificate, uh, not even necessarily things that are related to like discounts or, you know, you get free stuff. Yes, we'd want to include that sort of thing, but more membership, the intrinsic value of membership. Yeah, belonging um, to the community. Yes. Uh, continuing to play a large role in our partnership with children with hair loss, uh, that I see as being a long-term partnership. Uh, it's really a great part. And then also continuing to focus more on little guys with long hair. Uh, we advocate for schools that have grooming policies that prohibit boys from growing their hair long. Uh, we have a lot of parents like that, or like I mentioned earlier, getting bullied or uh, getting teased about their long hair. Uh, so we do feature a lot of the little guys and, and having the youth involved. There was another kid recently. We did a blog post uh, for a kid who's in Little League and the umpire was giving him a hard time about having long. 
I don't know, call out video to him and go Eli and the whole thing. And that really brings us a lot of joy, uh, continuing to support the, the little guys and their parents and continuing to build the community. Uh, really, the next major benchmark is the Great Cut 2024. Uh, we had to wait five years, but we're going to do the Great Cut. It's going to be a charity haircutting event uh, in San Diego. We'll have a mail-in donation option, uh, but it's going to be a heck of, of an event. It's probably going to be tenfold. Was it? And Amazing. I have publicly committed to shaving my head entirely, which my partner Lindsay did last time. So... It'll be a lot. I just try to view that in the long term future. That's not coming yeah. for a while, you know. We're gonna yeah. be good. But <laughs> anyone who's it. interested would love to have, you know, Seth, uh, put it on your calendar now. It's gonna be twenty twenty four. Whether anyone cuts their hair or not, uh, it's just gonna be a spectacular thing to be a part of. So Amazing. after twenty twenty four, then we'll, we'll see where we go from there. Yeah. Well, Chris, I love again that you guys have a, a purpose behind a product that it's not just hair ties for guys. You're really building a culture and a community and you're being rewarded for that by like people saying yes. Uh, and by people purchasing your product. So I'm excited, uh, to watch where long hairs goes. I'm excited to watch where you El Rubio go, uh, and just to stay connected through the, through this journey. I lo love the work that you guys are doing. Hey, thrilled to be on the show. Thanks for having us, Seth. I uh, really enjoyed it. And same luck. You've got a, a great show going here and consistent guests. I was just listening to Chris Gronkowski uh, right before I dipped in here, and you have some business owners, so uh, keep it going. I should also say I appreciate the hospitality and getting this set up with the communications and making it very easy to me uh, for me to participate. Yeah, absolutely, man. Yeah, that goes a long way, and... Uh, maybe we'll have you back on, on the show one day. So thanks so much for your time. And uh, to the listener, thank you for listening. Share this episode uh, with a fellow with a long hair. You know, we all, we, are, we all know a dude with long hair. So just text, text, them, uh, text them that they should listen to this.